Welcome to Neogen's 2019 Capstone Report, our analysis of mycotoxin occurrence and relevant weather conditions during the 2019 growing and harvest season. We collect confirmed reports from numerous industry sources of high risk levels that are a concern for human or animal foods. It is important to be aware of changing risk profiles to assist with the implementation of a robust testing plan. Let's start by recapping the monthly weather and crop conditions that affected mycotoxin occurrence. In April, wet weather was prevalent with rain, melting snow, and flooding in many areas. 98% of acres had abundant to excessive soil moisture, which disrupted planting for corn, soys, and spring wheat. Temperatures were 1.8 degrees over normal. By month's end, only 15% of corn acres were planted, compared to the 27% five-year average. It is noteworthy that Michigan, Minnesota, North Dakota, Pennsylvania, and South Dakota had zero acres planted. This set the stage for late, immature crops at risk for frost. This May was the second wettest on record. Heavy rains pounded the plains in the Midwest, leading to the record slowest planting of corn since 1995. Flooding hit the Mississippi Valley, brought on by rainfall that was 152% of normal for May. Below normal temperatures were felt from the plains to the Great Lakes states. These conditions caused more delays in planting and crop maturity. The southeast, however, had hot and dry conditions. By month's end, only 58% of corn acres were planted versus the 90% five-year average. Corn emergence was 32% versus the 69% five-year average. Winter wheat was 66% headed, 10 points behind the five-year average. The good to excellent rating for winter wheat was 61%. Delays across the grain-producing regions set the stage for uneven planting and quality risks that were to come later in the season. Moisture levels moderated somewhat in June, but were still above normal. Isolated heavy rains occurred in the Mid-South to the Ohio River Valley. Some areas were impacted by very dry conditions, like the western and southeastern United States, where pollination of corn was beginning. This was prime time for aflatoxin growth from aspergillus molds. Overall temperatures were 0.2 degrees above normal, except for Michigan, Indiana, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, where cooler than normal temperatures kept grain development behind average. By the end of the month, the winter wheat harvest had started, but was 19 points behind the five-year average. Regions with excess moisture during the heading stage showed elevated don risks for small grains and late planted corn. In July, significant rains fell in the northern plains to the upper Midwest. The southern plains, central, and eastern Corn Belt were drier. By the end of the month, drought conditions appeared more prevalent in Alabama to the Carolinas. Temperatures were one degree above normal for most regions. By the end of the month, only 58% of corn was silking, well behind the five-year average. Early wet soil conditions for corn left shallow root systems that weakened corn plant standability and growth prospects. This affected corn quality and yield for many impacted producers. The winter wheat harvest progressed but remained behind normal in the Pacific Northwest. In August, weather was extremely varied across the country. Iowa was colder than normal, while Texas was hotter. Normal to below normal temperatures were felt across the northern plains and Midwest, keeping the pace of maturity behind. Flash drought conditions along with erratic rainfall hit the Pacific coast and southeast, causing further crop stress in those regions. Patchy drought areas emerged in parts of the eastern Corn Belt. Nebraska and Kansas exceeded average rainfall late in the season. Poor to very poor ratings in corn were between 20 and 35 percent for these states. September's late summer heat was nearly 10 degrees above normal from Texas to the Carolinas, coupled with little rainfall. These conditions raised the risk for aflatoxin and fumonisin. The northern plains were again hit with heavy rains threatening small grains and immature corn in fields. Mostly dry conditions covered the mid-Atlantic to Ohio Valley. By September 22nd, only 29% of corn was mature, the slowest pace since 2009. Harvest of corn barely reached 7% by September 22nd, down four points from the five-year average. The late frost risk for immature corn was the worst in recent years. As fall weather approached, many corn acres were unable to fully develop, and low test weight and damage from weather stress appeared. By this time of year, heat units were dwindling and wet corn in the field was unable to dry normally, causing serious harvest threats ahead. 
A wet corn crop at harvest is difficult to dry properly and costs per bushel are significant. Late in the fall, delays for propane left corn in the field far too long, worsening quality and shortening storage time. The Reveal Q Plus Max line of rapid mycotoxin tests has been expanded to include the first lateral flow test for ergot alkaloids on the market. It's the fastest, easiest ergot test available, delivering quantitative results in just eight minutes. Now let's look at this year's mycotoxin reports submitted to Neogen. Wheat, barley, and oats had widespread mycotoxin reports. As always, actual occurrence of mycotoxins varies widely. We received confirmed reports of Don in barley from the following states. Confirmed levels of Don in winter wheat came from these states. We had a confirmed report of Don in wheat mints. We had confirmed reports of Don in spring wheat. We also had a confirmed report of ochratoxin in oats. Now let's move on to corn and rice. Mycotoxins were found in almost all producing states. Aflatoxin in corn was found in the following states. Fumonisin in corn was found in these states. Don in corn was found in the following states. Reports of Don in corn silage came from these states. There was a report of Don in dried distiller's grains. This year, xarelinone was quite prevalent in several commodities and co-products. We had reports of xarelinone in corn, corn silage, corn gluten meal, corn germ, dried distiller's grains, brown rice, rough rice, rice bran. Reports of T2-HT2 have been found in corn and dried distiller's grains. We welcome your feedback on our 2019 capstone report and Monday mycotoxin and crop reports. Our team will be sending an online survey to our subscribers for their comments and suggestions. We appreciate your participation and hope you find these reports valuable. Thank you to our viewers for your interest in our mycotoxin reports throughout the growing and harvest season. And a special thanks to the customers, industry partners, and guest experts whose contributions make our reports possible. Please contact our milling and grain industry specialists with any questions about grain quality and how Neogen can help.